so much division in the church mm. today regarding. So unfortunately, this hit my feed and I just cannot help myself. I have just woken up. I'm going to go to the kitchen, make some cold brew at the same time. I'm going to try and bust out this international order because my pine needles just came in this topic and we but know where division me, comes me, from let me comes bring from the some very interesting ponderances to this because let me just start with this she says the rapture is a private invitation uh in first that's Thess first thessalonians when second thessalonians obviously expands on first thessalonians if it's a private invitation then why are the disciples expanding on First Thessalonians, are they not involved in the private invitation, yet they were disciples of Christ? Tell me how this makes sense. Who is more special than the disciples who went out and preached into all the world with boldness to suffer persecution, and each one suffered martyrdom, yet they expand on First Thessalonians and tell you what's to come first, were they not invited to this private rapture that she speaks of? So today we're going to be looking at each event individually. We're going to be giving supporting scripture so you can find it yourself in the Bible. And we're going to be looking at the purpose of each event because each event has its own individual, very different purpose from the other. And then we're going to be looking at a prophetic timeline that includes the rapture, the tribulation, the second coming, and then the millennial reign. So let's first define what the rapture is, and then we'll look at supporting scripture and its purpose. So the rapture is a private event between the church and Christ. Anyone who declares Jesus as Lord is taken up into the air to meet Christ, and then we are taken into heaven for the marriage feast. This is a private event. That means that the rest of the world will be left out. They will have no idea that it is happening, and they will only know that something happened because we're gone. Now let's delve into some scripture to support the rapture. So the first argument that I always hear is the word rapture isn't in the Bible. Well, no, it's not, but neither is the word Trinity. And I want to say, I notice a pattern with a lot of these um, pre-trib preachers that there, there's not a lot of substance in what they're showing. Um, taking one verse in Thessalonians, this is what a lot of them stand on and they don't keep reading. And it's uh, very convenient, but I noticed that all the ones that I see are very presentable. Their hair is very polished. Their eyebrows are done. Their lashes, their foundation, their contour, their blush, their lipstick, their lip liner. And I honestly believe, I'm not trying to, to sound rude or anything. I honestly believe that people pay more attention to these people when they're more presentable. They look more put together. Image is everything. Um... On the other hand, taking myself, for example, when I do my videos, I've just rolled out of bed. Um, I haven't washed my face. There's no makeup on. There's no mascara. There's no anything. I'm just, I'm doing my life, which entails a lot. Um, and I, it's just something I've noticed. I've thought, oh, you know, honestly, even for my small business, I feel like if I put my suits on that I've been given, I would get more credit. But I don't care that much because I'm busy and I'm blessed, right? But I've, I've noticed this. It's just uh, something that I believe a lot of these people get more credence because they're so much more presentable physically. And we still believe in that doctrine. You have to understand the Latin and Greek early translations to understand where we get the word rapture from. We get the word rapture from the Greek word harpazo, which means to be caught up, to be instantly snatched away, seized away, and the Latin word rapturo. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 is the most common rapture verse, which says, We who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up, harpazo. Now, I believe I've seen a difference that it has nothing to do with the word rapturo from my from my research and if you look at my videos called harpazo um and you really study and and i've brought a lot of videos here on where the ones that are taken and you look at the verses before and after it is very clear who is taken and who is left it is very very clear in the bible so so far this doesn't say anything 
in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The word harpazo is translated to take forcibly, to snatch, or to catch up. And we're going to get into the second coming in a little bit, but I just want to point out this fact. This is why the rapture is different from the second coming. Because the rapture, we are taken up into the clouds. Christ receives us unto himself. The second coming in Revelation 19. So this is why it's different because of your translation of that one verse. God always gives context, and if they are two separate events, we will find more context in the Bible, not an interpretation of the verse that is expanded upon as you keep reading Thessalonians. We come down with Christ. Christ actually comes down to earth, touches his toes to the earth in real time, and the entire... Once again, there's always context, so the Bible tells us when Christ comes down. He's not going to leave us in the dark. He has context. The world will see him. The rapture, in comparison, is a private event where we're caught up just... Now, yes, we get more mysteries from the Holy Spirit from relationship. But we got context on 1 Thessalonians already, if you keep reading. The church to me... And it matches up with the book of Revelations. And, I, and you know, I've, I've, I've put this in other videos, but... Peace and safety in Thessalonians is in multiple chapters. Look at my peace and safety videos, right? Coming suddenly matches up with, with thief in the night in multiple chapters. Christ in the air. The whole world will not see it. The whole world will not be a part of it. It is a private event. The second coming, he comes down in real time. This is the beginning of John 14. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare... So she says it's a separate event according to her translation. Yet there is still no biblical context. Then she goes to John 14, 1, 1 through 4. Why do you think it starts out with let not your heart be troubled. Why do you think it starts out that way? There a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself. First Corinthians 15, we shall. Let me get into this first. So it says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed because this is in our video. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. So, we go to the context. Where else in the Bible does it talk about the dead being raised, right? This is the context that it gives us. We also need to understand what is the last trumpet. Well, there is context for that as well. Now, this is what AI likes to tell you, and we know who's behind AI. There are demonic and sentient be beings from the dark kingdom behind AI. And if anyone knows that, I am definitely one of the people who know that from what I've been exposing, not just from this channel, but from the products that contain AI that many are unaware of and how AI has targeted me over the years. This is what this says about <clears throat> how the last trumpet could very well be the seventh trumpet. There is always context and since Revelation is the last book of the Bible and our God is a God of order, all the verses before shed light on the last book, which is the Revelation. It says in Greek, it can mean the last in point of sequence. It says this trumpet sounds before the wrath of God descends, yet Revelation six seventeen speaks of the wrath of the Lamb as having come, and the seventh trumpet doesn't sound until Revelation 1115 and that matches up with what I've been showing here on this channel as well because we can see in Revelations 12 That the woman rises up on wings like weagles e wings as eagles into the wilderness and she is nourished for three and a half years Who do you think is nourishing her and it says Matthew 24 parallels Revelation 19 Do we forget about the part that says those who are still alive and remain? What does that sound like to you? Many have already been slain. Here she says he could have said endure. It literally says worthy to escape all these things. And here we have another mirror of the thief in the night. This is the peace and safety that Thessalonians, Thessalonians speaks of. Carousing, drunkenness, cares of this life that that day come upon you unexpectedly. It will come as a snare. Pray that you can escape.
Once again, keeping from the hour of trial. You know that Gazans have been persevering by the same synagogue of Satan? He's telling them as well to hold fast. Then she speaks falsely and says that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. It says that he may be revealed in his own time. Then it says, for the mystery of lawlessness. It's telling us who the restrainer is. She doesn't make sense.